You are about to listen to a message from Apostle Joseph Minta of Touch World Ministries International. Be blessed. Are you anointed? The anointing upon is Acts 1 8. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon, not in, comes upon you. That anointing upon it brings power, power to serve. Every form of service in a church, every form of service in a church. Before you carry out any form of service in the church, you must be empowered with the anointing upon for you to be effective. Every form of service, whether you are an usher, children's ministry teacher, security, uh, traffic directors, sweepers, greeters, instrumentalists, kitchen staff, uh, technical staff, whatever function that you play in the church thank you lord jesus thank you lord father we thank you this morning we give you praise we give you praise for your faithfulness we give you praise for your loving kindness we thank you lord we thank you we pray with god that you help us to understand your word bring us in alignment with you and open us up to the treasury of your word. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for today. You are welcome to church um, this morning. Today is 27th February 2022. And we are still on the dominion system of the believer. And uh, we've, um, we are looking at the Holy Spirit, but uh, as the spirit of dominion. So we are still on the dominion systems. And um, uh, last week, we, we, we looked at a little bit about the anointing within anointing upon uh, what did we talk about last week? What was the topic for last week? What? Rivers of oil. Yes. And today, today's message is, are you anointed? It's a question. So ask somebody by you, are you anointed? And ask the other person, are you anointed? And, and wait for the response. What did the person say? <laughs> okay. Um, I remember um, on 25th January 2007, I had a dream. Uh, that was a, the first, the very first of its kind. In a dream where um, I was imparted with anointing. That was the very first time I had a dream where somebody laid hands on me and uh, several other dreams were to follow but in this particular dream i was i was about to preach to a couple of people my parents were there and, and some few other people to church members were there and i was going to preach from matthew 6 uh, 24 talking about mammon and all then as i stood behind the lectern uh Pastor Ben, he came from my left. There was a door to my left like this. So he came from the left, came and stood in front of me. And the question he asked me was, are you anointed? Are you anointed? And when he asked me that question, I, I didn't give any answer. I was just looking at him. And then he laid hands on me. When he laid hands on me, I fell to the, to the floor. Then I, I felt heat oozing out of my body heat was coming out of my body and i was speaking the chinese the chinese language then as i lay on the floor he was telling the congregation he said this man has been ministering faithfully for seven years <laughs> now is the time for his anointing and proud to that I've been involved in Christian leadership, 
ministry sort of, you know, uh, since 1995, which, which meant that from 95 to 2007 was about 12 years. So the 12 years I was involved in teaching, um, teaching, and then leading leadership. I was part of the elders of, a, of the church that I was in at that time in, in the 90s. That we came out of CCC, I, I served in the children's ministry, served in the young adults ministry, served uh, as Bible studies um, teacher and all that. But then he said that he had been ministering faithfully for seven years. And now is the time, please, I, I don't want to be screaming. Now is the time for his anointing. Now, so that, that brings to mind the subject of the anointing. What exactly is the anointing? And because it's like the question he asked me was, are you anointed? You are, you are going to preach and you have people to listen to you, but are you anointed? And before, even before then, I had had encounters, but I had not had anyone lay hands on me. You know, I had encounters in 2005, that encounter that changed my whole life and ministry forever happened in 2005. So from that time to 2007, um, I was a new person, a new. It was as if I had been baptized in the Holy Ghost afresh. Everything about me changed, you know. And that was a foundation God was laying for what I'm currently involved in and what I'm going to be doing after this. So, um, first of all, let me, let, me, let, me, let me touch on what anointing is not. Because sometimes to know what something is, you must know what it is not. Number one, the anointing is not oil. It's not olive oil, for that matter. And it's not oil. It's not oil. Number two, the anointing is not physical sensations. That's not the anointing. Even though the anointing, the presence of the anointing can sometimes produce sensations. That is not what the anointing is. That is not what the anointing is. Number three, the anointing is not a gift or a talent. The anointing is not a gift or a talent. It's not something you learn to do. The anointing can come on your gift for perfection and for you to be able to minister for God. But the anointing is not a gift. The anointing is not skills. You can develop a gift into skills, but that is not the anointing. That is not the anointing. So we need to be clear about that. Now, when you look into the Bible, you will see two things that are worthy of note. The act of anointing and the substance that is used to anoint. The act of anointing. And when we say anoint, the word anoint simply means to rub or smear. You remember Jesus Christ said, when you fast, do not be like hypocrites. He said, when you fast, he said, wash your face, anoint yourself. It means apply cream. Okay, so that is, that is, that is, uh, it is both a noun and a verb. Anoint yourself. Anoint yourself. So you're saying uh, apply oil or apply cream. And till this day in Israel, uh, they use olive oil to anoint themselves. You know, they use it, use it for several several purposes. I remember when I was in Israel, one of our tour guides asked me a question. He said, are you a pastor? I said, yes. Then he said, what do you use the olive oil for in Ghana? Because when your colleague pastors come, they come for gallons, gallons. And so what do you use the olive oil for in your country? Because there it is used for cooking. They use it to cook. Yes, and I, I tasted the, the real olive, olive, you know, the, the fruit, olive. And I said, well, they use it to pray. Then he was, he was surprised. He said, wow, wow. 
uh, he, he was not a Christian. He was not a Christian. You know, he was a Jew, not a Christian. And so he didn't, he didn't, he didn't know why Ghanaian pastors would come to Israel and then get gallons of olive oil. Because we think that that is the anointing. And sometimes we even go to the extent of saying that this is special oil from Israel. And therefore it contains special anointing. Special anointing because it came from Israel. The olive oil is just like frightal or um, vegetable oil. All the oil the women use to fry things and to cook. The olive oil is just like that. So the word anoint simply means applied cream or smear, smear, rub. Now there are Greek, there are Hebrew words and Greek words that I just I just want to give you some so that you can use them as nicknames and uh, you know pet names. The word mishak, mishka, is the Hebrew word unction, and it's one of the words that we that are translated as anointing, mishak. M I S C H A A. Then the Greek word chrisma. Chrisma is also used in talking about the anointing. Chrisma also means special endowment. Special endowment. Okay. Then there are other Hebrew words that describe, you know, for instance, the word bala, B A L A L, means to flood or to be overflowing with oil. It means to be dipped in oil or to be submerged in oil bala so and and, and the word massage massage means massage is m a s h a g i just look for these words just to give you a sense of what the bible means by anointing or to anoint massage means to consecrate to consecrate then dashen Dashen means to be overweight, to be especially satisfied. When the Bible says they shall be fat and flourishing, that word fat, fat is also translated uh, anoint or anointing. It's because of the anointing, the yoke shall be broken. Uh, that word anointing is fatness. Isaiah 10, 27, because of the fatness. It's like because the, the cow is so fat, the yoke cannot fit the neck. So the anointing is also described as fatness, weight, fat. Then the last word is shemen. S-H-E-M-E-N. Shemen means fragrance. 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 That's the word shemen. Fragrance. Okay. Now, so two things worthy of note. The act of anointing with oil. We're going to look at it in the Bible. The act of anointing with oil, what it stood for and what it stands for. And then second is the substance that was used to anoint. It wasn't anything that was used to anoint. It wasn't everything. It was, there was a special composition of the anointing oil as was given to Moses. And that was what was used to anoint. And the composition, the ingredients, they speak a lot. Now, in the Bible... Whenever oil was applied, in other words, whenever somebody was anointed, it meant three things. Number one, it meant consecration or separation. It meant that the person had been separated or consecrated. Separated. When God says, consecrate for me the firstborns or consecrate for me this person, what it means or what it meant in the Old Testament was that they will have to apply oil. The oil came on only three people in the Old Testament. The entire Old Testament, only three people had, only three categories of people had the oil. And they were the, the prophet, then the priest, and the king. Apart from these three offices, nobody was supposed to have the oil. The oil was not, was, was not supposed to be put on any other person apart from people in these three categories. Now, so it meant to, to be consecrated or separated. Separated means to, to be set apart for divine use, for godly use, for divine purposes. To be set apart for divine purposes. That is 
That was the first, the first one. Then the second implication was to be empowered. To be empowered. So if you were anointed as a king, right after that, the anointing of a king came on you. The empowerment of a king came on you. If you are anointed as a prophet, right from that moment, that empowerment to function as a prophet came, came to you. And then we're going to look at some examples. Then the third one was endorsement. Endorsement. Endorsement here. By endorsement, I mean acclamation of divine ordination. That it was, it was, it was endorsing your ordination. What God had purposed that you would be was being unveiled or endorsed. Now, in 1 Samuel 16, verse 13, we see David being anointed um, in the presence of his brothers. David was anointed in 1 Samuel 16, verse 13. Then one of the servants, no, no, 13, then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, that is David, in the midst of his brothers. He took a horn of oil. Uh, that means that he poured the oil on his head, on David. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. So by the act of pouring oil on David, what it meant was that he was separated from his brothers, chosen among the lot to be the king of Israel. Now the second thing happened was that the Spirit of God came upon him and that anointing to be king, that anointing to be king was released so the, the application of the oil on David set him apart, number one. Number two, empowered him to fight like a king. Even though he was not on the throne, he was a king. Go to verse 18. When they were looking for somebody to play a harp for Saul to um, deliver Saul from evil spirits, look at the description they, they gave about David. He had not fought any, any wars yet. He had just been anointed with a kingly anointing. He said, the one of the servants answered and said, look, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing, a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a handsome person, and the Lord is with him. Now, this time, he had not fought even one, one battle. Hello? But the oil for warfare had come upon him. Because the kingly anointing was for warfare. It's, it's, it, in, in today's terms, is an apostolic anointing. The kingly anointing was, was for warfare. Warfare was one of the main, main reasons why God raised kings. To lead them to war. And because the anointing that was put on David was to anoint him as king, even though he had not fought any wars, the people saw some warfare anointing on him. Man of war, prudent in speech, a handsome person. And the Lord also is with him. Now, in Exodus 30 verse 30, you will see that Aaron and his sons were also consecrated as priests. And you shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may minister to me as priests. The anointing, you see, they were, they were supposed to be anointed so that they could stand before God and minister to God. Not everybody qualified to go about the service of the tabernacle and to carry the holy things of God and to minister to God. You had to be anointed. You know, and, and these, these were anointed, separated as priests. Now, after this anointing, the unction to function as priest was also released. So from that time, Aaron and his sons were set apart and they were not the same because the oil had touched them. Now, this oil that was used to anoint these people, the priests, the prophets, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the king, when God instructed Moses to constitute the oil, God gave him specific instruction. So it's not only about the act of anointing, but it's about the substance that was applied. Now, let's examine the substance. the substance. Everything that you see in the Old Testament was a type or a shadow. So as we go along, you will see that the ingredients of the anointing, they were all 
in Christ. They were nature, the, the nature of Christ. And so the anointing is application of Christ's nature in simple terms. But let's look at Exodus chapter um, 30 verse, no, Exodus 30, yes, but from verse 22 to 25. Look at, moreover, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, also take for yourself quality spices, 500 shekels of liquid mare, half as much sweet smelling cinnamon. That's 250 shekels of cinnamon. Then 250 shekels of sweet smelling cane. 500 shekels of cassia, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, and a heen of olive oil. A heen of olive oil. Okay. So, uh, continue. And you shall make from this a holy anointing oil, an ointment compounded according to the art of the perfumer. It shall be a holy anointing oil. Now you will see that God gave him ingredients to add and then add olive oil. So the oil that was applied in Moses' time was not just olive oil. It had other constituents. Meh. Sweet smelling calamus. Sweet smelling cane. And then cassia. All these were spices. Fragrant spices. That were selected. And they were selected in specific quantities. Because they foreshadowed Christ. And if you look in the Bible. You will see that these fragrances were. They were, they were spices that were identified with Christ. Throughout the Bible. Now mayor. We all know mayor. Mayor. Uh, and Jesus, you know, you know the relationship between men and Jesus. The wise man brought Mary, then uh, he was anointed with Mary for burial. When Mary poured that oil on him, it, that was, that was Mary to anoint for burial. Now, so when you read, let's let's go to uh, Song of Songs, one verse three, and then twelve. Song of Songs, one verse three. Song of Solomon was about the relationship between Solomon and uh, his wife, one of his wives, who was a black woman, a Shulamite. About the Song of Songs is about the relationship between Christ and the church. So out of Song of Solomon, we have Song of Songs, the, 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 the greatest of all songs. So when you read that, that book, you will see that it is talking about a very deep and high theme. Very deep and high thing. Now he says, because of your fragrance, because of the fragrance of your good ointment. Now this one is the woman talking about the, the man. Your name is ointment poured forth. Therefore the virgins love you. Then verse 12. While the king is at his table, my partner sends forth his fragrance. You see, fragrance. Now, fragrance, we have the fragrance of Christ. All these spices are components of the fragrance of Christ. You can get to Psalm 45, verse 6 to 8. Psalm 45, verse 6 to 8. It talks about the fragrance of the king. And uh, that's, that's, that is what the anointing constitutes. And that, that, is, that is what constitutes the anointing. Your throne, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companion. This one was about Christ. Uh, Hebrews 1 and I refer to it. Okay. All your garments are scented with myrrh and aloes and cassia. You see? Out of the ivory palace, pa palaces by which they have made you glad. Hello. Okay, so you see, this is talking about Christ. He said, All your garments are scented. The, th those spices had very sweet, sweet, very sweet fragrance, nice smell. So the high priest 
when the high priest was anointed as he entered the room, the fragrance would fill the whole room. That was the idea. You know, and those fragrances, the, the, the spices, they, they were aspects of the nature of Christ. That's why Christ is the one who is called the anointed. When we talk about the anointed, the anointed one is Jesus. The name Christ was not his surname. No, no. It was a description of who he was, the anointed one. The only person who was anointed. All the various types and shadows in the Old Testament about the anointing, about the constituent of anointing oil and all, were types and shadows of Christ. They all came to Christ, the anointed one. The only person, the only person who has the anointing is Christ. The Messiah, Messiah, the anointed one. Okay, that's why we are seeing all these fragrances associated, associated with Christ. Because in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 2.15, the Bible talks about the fragrance, the fragrance of Christ. For we are to God, the fragrance of Christ, among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. The fragrance, there's a kind of fragrance that Christ exudes. Fragrance, scent, nice smell, sweet scent. He said, sweet smelling, sweet smelling calamus, sweet smelling cinnamon, sweet smelling cane. You see, God, God wants sweet, God wants nice smells. Hello? God wants nice smells. Even the high priest garment, he said, make sure you get an expert to design it for beauty and for glory. Not just glory, beauty. God is interested in beautiful things. Huh. So, putting all this together, I'm going to give you a definition of the anointing. Uh, I've chosen to define it this way for a reason. So, I will define the anointing as the act or process of God separating a human vessel unto himself to empower his function to enable him to release the fragrances of Christ on the earth in accordance with his ordination from eternity. So I've put all this together. The act or process of God separating a human vessel unto himself to empower his function to enable him to release the fragrances of Christ on the earth in accordance with his ordination from eternity. So the anointing is being empowered, being empowered to spread his fragrances, being empowered by God, being separated unto God, and being empowered by God to release the fragrances of Christ on this earth. And that will be in accordance with your ordination from eternity. What God purposed for you to do, your calling, that is, that is what is anointed. It is your calling that is anointed. And your calling is anointed to release the fragrance of Christ on this earth. So the anointing is not just power. It's not just take it. People sometimes think, oh, you know, this guy is anointed. Why? Because, see, when he does this, people fall. That he's anointed. That is, that is, that is just a manifestation of, of the power of the Spirit. But we have erroneously concluded that that is the anointing. But the anointing can produce that. But that is not necessarily the anointing. The anointing is an act or a process. A process because you can be anointed at various levels. David was anointed three times in his life. And all the three, they, were, they came on uh, aspects of his calling. His calling. So it is your calling that is anointed. 
your calling. There's a garment on you. That garment is your calling. And that garment is what the anointing comes on. Hello? If there's no calling, there's no anointing. So I'm going to take you through scriptures for you to know that it is your calling that attracts the anointing. The anointing comes to rest on the calling. If there's no calling, there is no anointing. No calling, no anointing. Now, you will look into the Bible, you will see that God doesn't only look at availability. God also looks at usability. You, you can be available but not useful. So in the Bible, God doesn't only think about, I'm looking for vessels, 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 a vessel to use. No, he will empower you to be useful or usable. That's why I say in a great house, there are vessels of gold, vessels of silver, of clay, of wood, some to honor, some to dishonor. But it says that if anyone purges himself from the latter, he will be a vessel, a vessel of Honor fit for the master's use. Hello? A vessel of honor, not only that, but fit for the master's use. What is, what, is the, what is the essence of being a vessel that cannot be used? So God is looking for people who are available and also usable. And to make you usable, that is why he puts the anointing on you. So when you respond to the call, then he puts the anointing on you to make you usable. So the anointing qualifies you to be used of God. Anything that doesn't have oil cannot be used by God. Hello. Oh, so come to 1 Corinthians chapter, no, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21, 22. 21, 22. Okay. Now, he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. So, he has established us in Christ and anointed us who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. So, he said that he has anointed us. He has first of all established us in Christ and therefore has anointed us. So, let me repeat what I said. I said that God will make you usable by putting his oil, which is, a, which is the anointing, by putting the anointing on you. After you have responded to his call, his invitation, then he will put the oil on you to make you usable. Otherwise, you can be available but not useful in the hands of the master. Okay, so in the Bible... In the Old Testament, you will see that anything that didn't have oil did not please God. Any sacrifice that didn't have a touch of oil well, did, did not please God. So God gave them specific instruction. Come to Exodus 40 verse 9. Look at how God, what, what, anything that the oil touched was holy, was separated. You know, and you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle. And all that is in it, and you shall hallow it, and all its utensils, and it shall be holy. Holy because the oil had come upon it. The oil, which is a symbol in our terms of the anointing, had come upon that, that thing. And so that tabernacle became holy, that utensil became holy because of the oil. And I'm seeing that. Even in their sacrifices, God always demanded that they put oil on their sacrifices. Now, if it, if, if, if it came from animals, there must, there must be fat in the animal for it to be accepted. If there's no fat, he will never accept it. But if it came from grains, you must put oil on it. Leviticus chapter 2, verse 1, then verse 4, then verse 14. Leviticus chapter 2, verse 1. When anyone offers a grain offering to the Lord, his offering shall be of fine flour, and he shall pour oil on it and put frankincense on it. Verse 4. Verse 4. And if you bring an if you bring as an offering a grain offering baked in the oven, 
It shall be on living cakes of fine flour mixed with oil or on living wafers anointed with oil. Did you see that? Then verse 14. If you offer a grain offering of your first fruit to the Lord, you shall offer for the grain offering of your first fruit green heads of grain roasted roasted on the fire grain beating from full heads uh -huh. okay continue and you shall put oil on it and lay frankincense on it it is a grain offering every offering that was given to god in the old testament had to have oil on it otherwise god will never accept it the animals even go to genesis 4 verse 4 look at why god accepted Abel's sacrifice it wasn't just because it was it was just the the, the blood he said and Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat hello and of their fat and the lord respected Abel and his offering not only was it the firstlings or the firstborns, but their fat was also needed. You don't dare go before God without oil. You dare not do anything for God without oil. God would never allow you to do anything for him without oil. By oil, I'm not talking about anointing oil. I'm talking about the anointing. Without he anointing you, Whatever God wants you to do, he will place oil on you before you become useful. Otherwise, all that you will do for God will be non-scoring. He will never be pleased if he doesn't touch you. If he doesn't touch you. If he has not touched you, you cannot release anything that will be acceptable in his, in his, in his presence. Therefore, every calling comes with anointing. Every calling every calling comes with anointing and when the calling is upgraded the anointing too is upgraded that's why david was anointed three times the first one was before his brothers the second one he was that one he was anointed as king over israel but that was the initial anointing uh that anointing attracted warfare attracted many unpleasant things we are going to see the ingredients that the reason why when God anoints you, you attract many things, good and, good and bad. So when David was anointed the first time, it was before his brothers. That was the first anointing, the outer court. Then the second time, now, now, now this first anointing provoked warfare. It brought Goliath. Then the second time was anointed, was anointed in Hebron as king over Judah. That anointing also brought warfare. The house of Saul fought the house of David. There was a long war. Second Samuel 3 verse 1. There was a long war. Then the third anointing, he was anointed as king over all Israel. Now, that anointing also attracted the Philistines. Bible says when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed as king over Israel, they came to battle. They came to fight him because of the anointing. So you see the progression from uh, before his family, then to before Judah, and then to before Israel. And each of these anointings, they came, each of these callings, they came with anointing. So when the call is upgraded, the anointing too is upgraded. So you can have several anointings, several callings in one life. God, see, the, the call of God is not just one thing, He upgrades you, you upgrade come up here there's always plenty of come up here in a work with god you get your point god to say now upgrade now come up here and when you respond to that invitation another level of the anointing is put on you because you can never minister to god without anointing he can never use you if he doesn't put oil on you no sacrifice will be accepted without oil that is why you see what god has done in the new creation is that the reason why we are asserting the beloved is that he has immersed us in oil he has anointed that's the reason why he sealed us with the holy spirit 
That's why the anointing within is given to you when you are born again. It is to make you qualify. It is to qualify you to be able to serve God. To qualify you to stand before God. To qualify you to be accepted. It is because of the anointing within that we are accepted before God. So Ephesians 1 verse 6 says that we have been accepted in the beloved. Why? Because he has established us and anointed us and he has sealed us with the Holy Spirit who is the guarantee. He has sealed us. Otherwise, the new, otherwise the believer could never please God or be accepted by God. But thank God that even the day old believer is accepted because he is anointed. Hello? He is anointed. But that is not the only anointing you need because that's not the only call you have. There are four, four levels of call or calling in a believer's life. Four levels. And I'm going to take you through these four levels and then you will see that these four levels, they come with specific anointings. Four levels. But before then, let me let you give you a little big, a little background about the number four in relation to the Christian journey. The number four is very significant in a Christian work. And I've already explained to you that there are four main stages of the Christian's development. You can get the message I preach on the life cycle of a believer and then um, apostolic patterns of spiritual growth in the believer. I, I detailed four levels, four stages of growth. The brephos, newborn. I, I use Greek words. The brephos is the newborn baby, the newborn believer, brephos. Then you go to the nepios. The nepios is a young child. Like Paul said, when I came to you, uh, I, 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 I fed you as babes, as babes, as babes, as babes, young children. You know, you could not receive. That was nepios, nepios. Then the next word is Nianiskos. Nianiskos is the young man in Christ. John said, I write to you young men because you have overcome the devil. It wasn't referring to literal young men. There's a stage in your Christian life that you are called a young man. Energetic, young man. Then the last stage is Telios. Telios is the full grown man in Christ. Telios. That the man of God may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing, fully furnished unto all, every good work. The telios is a perfect or complete or full-grown man. So there are four stages of our call. Now, do you also know that there are four stages in ministry? In Acts 1 verse 8, it says, you shall receive power when the anointing comes upon you. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall receive power. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, those, those apostles knew it to be literal Jerusalem, but it was figurative. It was saying that there are four levels. This power will go four levels. Jerusalem, the first stage. Then Judea, second stage. Then Samaria, third stage. Then the uttermost parts of the earth, fourth stage. In Ezekiel 47, verse 1 to 5, the Bible talks about the man of God, Ezekiel, being led by an angel. He said the angel was measuring for him to cross, cross the river. He measured the first one, it was ankle deep. Second one was knee deep. Third one was waist deep. Fourth one was a river that you had to swim. Four stages. Hello? In Luke 13, Jesus gave a parable of a man who planted a, a, a fig tree. And the fig tree was not growing after three years. Then the, the owner said, Cut it down. Why does it take up so much space? And the husband man said, please, leave it alone for just one more year. After the fourth year, if it doesn't bear fruit, then you, you can cut it down. The fourth year. And that is significant because there are four stages. In, in Matthew 4, verse, 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 verse 26 to 20, 28, it said, when the seed is planted, the seed is planted, first stage. It, 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 it's, this is how it grows. First, first is what? The, 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 the ear, the blade. Second is the ear. Third is the full grain. 
So the seed is planted, one. Number two, the ear comes. Number three, the, the, the blade. Number three, the ear comes. Then number four, the full. Go to verse 28. You are, you are in 29. So that is, these are four levels. And they correspond, they correspond to four levels of calling in the believer. If you look at Jesus' life, there were four levels of calling in his life. In fact, there were four levels of sonship in Jesus' life. The first one was Matthew 1, 21. He said, you shall give birth to a son. A son. And he was, so he was born as a son. That was the first level of sonship of Jesus Christ. Born as a son. Number two, in Matthew 3, at Jordan, he said, this is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. That was, that was endorsement. That was endorsement. The first one was that he was born as a son. Second level of sonship, he was endorsed as a son. The third level was in Matthew 17 verse 5. When the bright cloud came and overshadowed Peter and said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now, listen to him. Now, in Jordan, he didn't say listen to him. You know why? Because he had not been tested yet and tried yet. He had to be tried by the devil. After he had passed the test, then in, in, uh, on Mount Horeb, he said, now listening to him. That was when he was approved as a son. Then the fourth and final level of sonship was when he rose from the dead. In Acts 13, 33, he said, this day I've begotten you. That was when he was raised from the dead. Then Romans chapter 1, verse 3 to 4, it said, Jesus Christ, who according to the flesh was the seed of David and was declared to be the Son of God with power after resurrection. Romans 1, 3 to 4. And so he was declared to be the Son of God with power after resurrection. Four levels of sonship of Jesus. You see, four, four, four. The Bible, the Bible is not just an ordinary book. The Bible was inspired. The Bible is consistent. See, four levels, four stages. The path of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, number one, which shines brighter, number two, and brighter, number three, onto a more perfect day, number four. It's all in force. So there are four levels of calling. The first level of calling is called to be saints. Called to be saints. The second level is a call to service. A call to, I'm going to explain, a call to service. The third level of calling is a call to a governmental office. A call to leadership. And the fourth level of calling is a call to eldership. A call to eldership. And, and, and that, is, that is the highest. The highest calling of a believer is to be called as an elder. Just as Peter was an elder and John was an elder. Not an elder as in elder over a church or something. But elder, elder statesman in the body. That is, that is a high calling. And that also comes down. So all these four levels of callings, they come with different, different anointings. Now, in First uh, Corinthians 1 verse 2, you see the call to be saints. First Corinthians 1 verse 2, you see call to be saints. We have been called to be saints. To the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. Called to be saints. Now, that is the first calling you responded to when you give a life to Jesus Christ. You were called to be a saint. The word saint means sanctified, set apart. A saint is not somebody who is dead. No, no, no. A saint is somebody who has been sanctified, set apart, which means that you have responded to God's call. In the Bible, Paul called the church the believers saints. All the believers were called saints. So saints are not people who are dead. Hello? That's the Bible. Okay. Now, so that's 1 Corinthians 1 verse 2. You can talk of Romans 1 verse 7. Romans 1 verse 7. That one also talks about called to be saints. 
to all, all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Called to be saints. Now, this call comes with anointing within. First John 2.27. This call comes with anointing within. I said that every call comes with anointing because you cannot do anything for God without anointing. But the anointing which you receive, which you have received from him, abides in you. And you don't need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and it's true, and it's not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. This anointing came with your calling to be a saint. When you responded to the call to be a saint, that anointing came, came on you. It, that anointing came to take residence in your spirit. It's the abiding anointing. The anointing that abides in you. That one is in you. In you. It abides in you to guide you, to teach you, to build you, to sanctify you, to help you to grow in the, into the image of Christ. It's the anointing within. The second level of call is a call to service. A call to service. Now, this call is within the scope of the anointing upon. The anointing upon is Acts 1 8. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon, not in, comes upon you. That anointing upon, it brings power, power to serve. Every form of service in a church, every form of service in a church. Before you carry out any form of service in the church, you must be empowered with the anointing upon for you to be effective. Every form of service, whether you are an usher, children's ministry teacher, security, uh, traffic directors, sweepers, greeters, instrumentalists, kitchen staff, uh, technical staff, whatever function that you play in the church, you must have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's serious. You see, Acts chapter 6, verse 1 to 6. Acts 6, verse 1 to 6. Now, in those days, when the number of disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, that's the Greeks, because their widows were neglected in their distribution. Then the twelve, the apostles, summoned the multitude of disciples and said, It's not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, who we may appoint over this business. It was, it was business, an administrative work. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, a uh, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. They laid hands on them. Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly, in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. You see the results of getting people who have this service anointing to serve in the ministry. When Peter and Co. said, we are not going to share food anymore, get people who have anointed, they lay hands on them to serve and to share food. They didn't, they didn't just say, oh, we want people who can share no, no, no. They had to lay hands on them. They set them. Why? You can't do anything in the, in the body, anything in the church without anointing. 
That's why you mm. must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You see, I heard a story of, uh, of uh, the late Makion. He said that somebody was playing the instrument. And he asked the person, are you baptized in the Holy Spirit? He said, no, he said, get up. <laughs> get somebody who was baptized to come and play the instrument. And, and, and people think that, oh, he's, he was just being spiritual. He was just telling the truth. Because the oil must be on your service. And the anointing upon, that is what empowers us for service. Everything you carry out in the church, you must have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Had an encounter. That anointing upon you. Because for every kind of service, there is anointing that is released. Anointing. There are various ministries of service in the church. And each of them must be carried out under the anointing. In Romans 12 verse 5, the Bible talks about different graces. Teaching, exhortation, prophecy, giving, mercy, uh, and all leadership. All these things, all these things are graces. Graces. Go to Romans 12, verse 5. Okay, go to Romans 12, verse 5. So we being, so we being many, are one body in Christ. And individually members of one another. Okay. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them according to the grace. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Our ministry, the word ministry here means service, service. There's a gift called service. Let us use it in our service or ministry. This, this, these are not offices, these are graces. They are, they are graces. And before you can carry out these functions, you must have been empowered anointed by the Holy Spirit. Baptized in the Spirit. Not just the anointing within. I'm, I'm talking about the anointing upon. That is what is for service. The one within is for you. It's not for others. The one within is for you to refresh you, to sustain you, to build you. You know, to direct you, to lead you, to guide you. But the one upon is for service. And all these things are service ministries. In the church. He who teaches in teaching, if you are teaching a Bible study, teaching Sunday school, whatever the teaching is, there might be oil on your on you. He will exhaust in exhortation. There are, some, there are some people who have the ministry of exhortation. They are the ministry of encouragement, the ministry of preaching, evangelism. They all fall under this ministry of exhortation. It's not an evangelist, but exhortation. They, they preach. They evangelize. It's a, it's a passion. He who gives with liberality before you can be raised as a kingdom financier, that you, must, you must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You see, you see that even giving, giving here is mentioned as a grace. Giving. So it's not talking about, it's talking about people who have been endowed with that kind of grace. Paul said, excel in this grace also. Given. He who leads with diligence, leadership too, is one of the service ministries. Leadership. At any capacity. Leading a small group. Leading a department. There are anointing that must rest upon you when you are leading. Hello? That is why, that is why before we appoint leaders... We must be careful not to appoint people because of their skills, necessarily. You must appoint people be, be, uh, according to their level of maturity or according to whether they have been anointed or not. Because even to serve tables, they have to lay hands on them. Don't take anything for granted. To serve tables, uh, lay hands on them so that the anointing will rest upon you for you to serve tables kitchen work which is even going to the body and coming out how much more what you are doing to 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 minister to people's souls their minds and their spirits everything then mercy with cheerfulness there are people who are the of the, the, the ministry of mercy 
Mercy is uh, what we call hospitality. They are hospitable. Mercy. This, this, all these are to be done under the anointing. Hello? Yes, so, so before you can do anything in the church, you must be anointed. God doesn't take anything for granted. It's not, it's not your skills. The anointing must come upon your skills. The third level of calling is a call into a governmental office. A governmental office is a five-fold ministry calling. Governmental office is a five-fold ministry calling. Now, this anointing, this call, also comes with a special anointing. The anointing that comes upon you to pastor or to stand in the office of a prophet or the evangelist or the apostle or the teacher is not the Acts 1 8 anointing. That's not the, it's not just that anointing. You shall receive power. No, that is more like the foundation. But there's an anointing that comes on you specially to stand in an office. So when we say that God has called somebody to the pastoral office, it means that an, another level of anointing is placed on the person. That is why in Romans 2, we have one who teaches. And then in Ephesians, we have a teacher. So there's a bit between one who teaches and one who stands in the office of a teacher. Anybody can teach. You can teach Bible studies. You can teach Sunday school. You can teach small group. It doesn't make you a teacher in an office. Hello? It says he who teaches. A teacher. He who prophesies. So you can prophesy, but that does not make you a prophet. You, you, it doesn't mean you stand in the office of a prophet. It is to prophesy upon the Acts 1.8. That's why Paul said, you may all prophesy. Everybody can prophesy. That it's not everybody who has been called into the office of a prophet. That one is an office. It's a governmental office. That one comes with a special anointing. A separate anointing. It's all in the scope of one anointing, but there are levels of the anointing. So you can teach as a normal teaching person, but you may not have been called into the office of a teacher. Because when you are called into a governmental office, there are three things that are, that are evident or that go with it. The first one is a mandate. Second one is the altar. The third one is the platform. These three things, they go with every governmental office. Every governmental office has these three things. The mandate. And you see, you don't just assume a call. It is dangerous. In fact, in the Old Testament, anybody who intruded into an office that he was not called was killed. In the Old Testament, in 2 Chronicles 26, verse 18. 2 Chronicles 26, verse 18. Let me show you something. King Uzziah. Now, King Uzziah was a king, not a priest. It was only David who was a king, a priest, and a prophet. Now, 2 Chronicles 26, 18. And they withstood King Uzziah and said to him, It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense. To burn incense to the Lord. But for the priest, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn incense, get out of the sanctuary, for you have trespassed. You shall have no honor from the Lord God. Then Uzziah became furious, and he had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was angry with the priest, leprosy broke out on his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord, beside the incense altar. Okay, continue. And Azariah the chief priest, Azariah the chief priest, and all the priests looked at him, and there on his forehead he was leprous. So they thrust him out of that place. Indeed, 
he also hurried out, hurried to get out because the Lord has struck him. Bell, 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 be alert, be alert, be alert. King Uzziah was a leper until the day of his death. He dwelt in an isolated house because he was a leper. For he was scattered from the house of the Lord. Then Jotham, his son, was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Why did he die? He intruded into an office that he was not called. It is dangerous. In the New Testament, you will not be struck. You may get by, but eventually, <laughs> it's going to catch up with you. That's why you don't assume a call to a governmental office because it comes with three things, mandate, altar, and platform. Now, the mandate stands for the authorization. There must be a clear call. I've called you as a pastor. I've called you as a teacher. I've called you as a prophet. I've called you as an evangelist. I've called you as an apostle. There must be a clear call. It, 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 it's, not, it's not something that uh, you don't know or somebody must tell you or you are not so sure. It means it's not, it's not yet a call. You, for the call to governmental office, that, those offices are gifts. There are people that are, that are give that Christ gifts to the church. Now, the altar stands for personalized dealings. Your relationship with God and the personal dealings of God, they all, they all call into, into a governmental office. So everybody who is called into the fivefold has an altar. You have, you have an altar and you have a porch. Your porch is the platform. You see, there's an altar and there's a porch. Joel 2.17. There's an altar and a porch. The altar is your private life. There are things that God will deal with you privately. There are things that God takes you through. There are instructions that God gives you. They are all part of your calling. There are things that God shows you. There are, there are, you know, there are, there are even aspects of scripture that God may, God may emphasize to you personally because of your calling. That is your porch. It's your porch. Let a priest who minister to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. The, the porch is the inner room. The altar is the outer room. So you have a mandate, then you have an altar, and then you have a platform, which is the porch. The platform is the fruit, what people see. That's the platform. It has the fruit. So you are being called to the office of a teacher, you don't only teach, you are resourceful. It means you can train people to teach. You can provide resources. Hello? You can provide resources. You can provide curriculum. You can train people to teach. It's not just teaching in the church. That makes you a teacher. That one makes you a teacher, somebody who has the grace to teach. But to stand in the office of a teacher, it's not like that. You can prophesy to people, prophesy, Every believer can prophesy. But to stand in the office of a prophet is not just prophesying. It means you can equip people to prophesy. You can impart. You can train. You stand your, your dealings with God. There are personal, personalized dealings with God. You, you, it's a process you go through, a training, a journey. Hello? So, even though if even even though I had a first impartation uh, in my dream, I had a series of impartations because that's not the only call God has called me to. When I had that impartation, the very first thing I noticed was that I was able to remember scriptures very, very fast. That was something that I noticed immediately. And then also, that set me out to minister with the power of the Lord. But then, going forward, there were several other impartation. I, I didn't, I didn't, be, I didn't say I'm an apostle because somebody said you are an apostle. No. No, no. That, 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 that would be assuming a call. I was called. I was called and I was, I, I was set in that office after the call. 
I was called as an apostle in 2011. That was when I was called. 8th May, in a dream, I was called. That was when I was called. I'll give you the details. Then in 2015, that was when I was endorsed. The two people that I saw in both dreams are related. The, the, somebody and his father. The first one was Abus of Duncan Williams. The second one was Abus of Dahusa. These two people are related. So the first one came and called me as an apostle. You are an apostle. Laid hands on me. Took me to a large room. And took me to his desk. I don't share this thing. Took me to his desk. And there was no chair. No chair at his desk. Then he said, you go for your own chair. I went for my chair. He said, sit down. I sat down. Anointed me. You have been called as an apostle. This, 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 that. When I had that impartation, then confirmation started coming. People would see me and say, you know you have called an apostle. Do you know God has put an apostle on you? You know you have this calling on you? you know? And it was just confirmation. But the real thing had taken place in the, in the porch. Then September 3rd, 2015 to then the late Archbishop came in the house. He also came to lay hands. And he also said, I, I ordain you as an apostle. He said, whosoever seen you remit is remitted. Whosoever seen you, you retain is retained. But I pray that you will have a heart of love. That was, that was a separate event. So, so you see, the anointing is not just one event. That's why I say it's an act or a process that God takes you through. And those dreams, they came at certain points, certain points in my life. Now, this one is not an impartation of a gift. This one is being set into an office. The first one said, you have been ordained. You have been called as this. Second one said, I'm ordaining you, which means I'm establishing you. Because there's a calling and the, 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 there's, there's a calling and there's a commission. And all these things come with different, different graces. That is why we don't assume. We don't assume a call. The first time the, in 2011 when it happened, I, was, I didn't care about it. It wasn't anything that it didn't make any difference in my life. I mean, not, not that it didn't make it, but I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't bother about it. I would say, um, but after 2015 that it happened, then the Lord told me in a dream, if you don't sit on this chair, you will not be qualified to sit on any chair. In fact, before then, when they would design flyers, I would tell, I would tell them, Put my name, Joseph Minta. That's all. I don't want, don't put any title. If you check all the other Christ titles, you see Joseph Minta. That's all. But after 2015, then he said, if you don't sit on this chair, you cannot sit on any other chair in my kingdom. <laughs> that was what I decided to. Let people call me. If you call me that, I respond to it. If you call me Brajo, I respond to it. If you call me Pastor Joe, I respond to you. If you call me Reverend Joe, I respond. If you call me Archbishop Joe, I will not respond. <laughs> that one, I will not respond. <laughs> the call to the governmental office also comes for anointing. You see, Paul and, and Barnabas in Acts 13, 1 to 2. Acts 13, 1 to 2. Paul and Barnabas, Paul was already called. He had been called into the ministry as a prophet. Or a teacher. Okay? But look at how he was called to be an apostle. Now, in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and what? Teachers. Which means that all these guys are either prophets or teachers. They were already called. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger. No, 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 no. Who was called Niger? Lucius of Sarin. Manan, who had been brought up with Herod Hetrotrach and Saul. So Saul was either a prophet or a teacher. I believe he was a prophet because he had revelations. 
as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Now they have been called already. They were Barnabas was the teacher, Paul was a prophet. But he said, Now separate to me, which means there was a, a, another level of calling that was coming. Okay. Then having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them and laid hands on them, they sent them away. They were sent. They were apostles. But they were prophets and teachers and then another level of calling was coming and so they had to be anointed for that level of calling. The ordination had already taken place in the spirit. But they laid hands on them and released them. Okay. I hope you understand. Now, so, that is, that is the call. That is the call to, um, to the, the governmental office. That one too comes with a special anointing. Now, the last and highest call is a call to eldership. This type of call, very few people, number one, get to it. Number two, very few people are in it, even as I speak. Very, very few. I am not in this call, please. I am in the governmental call. But I'm not in the last one. This one I'm talking about, I'm not there. But there are people who are there. Now, and this is not the ordinary and normal eldership that we know. That, oh, you have been appointed as an elder of a church. No, 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 I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about an elder in the body of Christ. An elder. That title was reserved for people like John the Apostle and Peter the Apostle. Come to First uh, Peter 5 verse 1. Peter said, I'm also an elder. Not that he was an elder that was appointed to oversee the flock. No. No. He had, he had, he had risen to an elder statesman in the body. First Peter fir- <laughs> Bell I don't know. I don't know how it's wrong with Bell this, uh, today. Five, verse one. Five, verse one. Is that how Mark trained you? <laughs> the elders who are among you, I exhort. I am I who am a fellow elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory. That will be reviewed. So Peter said that he was an elder. Not an elder who was appointed to oversee a church. No. This one was an elder statesman in the body. It's a high office. Very high office. Very, very high office. Now come to 2 John 1. 2 John 1. 2 John 1. And then after that, 3 John 1. 2 John 1. The elder... To the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also all those who have known the truth, the elder. Here, John the Apostle is called the elder. Now, he had, he, he had, he had ascended to another higher level. Eldership. He was not just an apostle, he was an elder. Elder statesman. Then the third John 2, third John 1. That one too, it says the elder. It was John, the, the apostle, writing to girls. That, that, that was the elder. The elder to the beloved girls whom I love in truth. See, so John was called the elder. In fact, it got to a point, John was the only surviving member of the original apostle of the Lamb. And he was the elder. According to tradition, he was the one who went to Ephesus to finally destroy or to, uh, to defeat the principality that was in Ephesus. It was John the Elder who went there. Timothy was a bishop in Ephesus. He was an apostle. But according to tradition, John was the one who went there to engage that principality and to dislodge him finally. Now, so this one... And, you know, there are various degrees of authority and various levels in the call of God. There are, there are people who are identified with robes. 
in the spirit. You see, when um, when God shows you uh, how people are ranked in the spirit, you will see that sometimes you will see people they appear and they have certain robes in the spirit. There are people with robes but no scepter. There are others with robes and scepters. I'm talking about physical robes. Too. I'm talking about you seeing people in dreams. Sometimes God can open your eyes and see the ranking of a person in the spirit. You will see that this one is an elder with a robe. This one has a robe and a scepter as well. This one has a robe and a scepter and a crown. This one has a robe, a scepter, a crown, and a throne. There are different, different levels of authority in the body. Different levels. There are people that I've seen personally in dreams that who, who had thrones. That God showed me what this man is doing is from a point of the throne. He has a throne. You know, there, there are people, these people, this, this, this level, they are, they are not, they are not, they are not just fivefold ministers. No, 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 no. No. There are people with great influence in heaven. Great influence. Not everybody gets there. And there are some few people who are there, even as I speak, very, very few. Very few who are there. These are the people that God calls my servant. The title, my servant, was used for very few people in the Bible. For God to say, my servant Abraham, my servant David, my servant Moses, my servant Jacob. And Jesus also called my servant the branch, Jesus. These were the people who were called by that title, my servant. It's not for every Tom, Dick and Harry. That's why, that's why you can speak against anybody and go scot free by saying, but why were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? He had gotten there. There are people when you speak against them, it can affect you. You can, you can go mad. They, they, will not, they, will not, they will not strike you or they will not say anything. But you see, by reason of their level, when they are, listen, there are even there are some angels who attend to some people when you speak against them, those angels will fight you. I was listening to one man of God called Bob O'Connor. Bob O'Connor, Bob O'Connor, Bob O'Connor. Yeah, he was a prophet, an American. And um, he said, when the little Idahosa died, uh, he met an angel. And he said, this angel was very fearsome, like terrible in, in appearance. You can't, you can't just look at him. He said, he looked very, very, very wicked. Then he said, the angel says, since Idaosa died, I've not been assigned to anybody. Then the man says something. He said, that was when he understood why Idaosa can speak and people will die. It wasn't from the man in Idaosa. It was from the angel who was attending to him. That's the kind of angel. So when you speak against him, that angel will fight you, can fight you. Because he's not just an apostle, he has a throne. There are some with robes. There are some with scepters, authority. They can, they can declare it will happen. There are some with crowns. Crowns, they can make decrees. You see, you can, you can, you can enforce decrees. But to make decrees is a different thing. You can enforce kingdom decrees, but to say, except by my word, there will be neither rain nor dew for three and a half years, except by my word, not by God's word. I'm talking about that level of authority. We don't, it, there, there, are, there, are, there are few people that occupy that place, very, very few. That is the highest call, the highest call in the body now. It's more than being called into the five foot, of, five foot ministry office. These people, in Isaiah 40, 44, verse 26, he said he confirms the words of his messengers. He confirms their word. Because by the time you get, he said, who confirmed the word of his servant and performed the counsel of his messengers? The Lord who confirmed the word of his servant and performed the counsel of his messengers. These people will become institutions and systems. 
They are not just, they are, they are not just uh, pastors or apostles. They can come in those titles. But, but it takes revelation for you to see those people. That's why there are some people, you see, one man of God said, they were talking about one man of God. <laughs> and then he said that, he also said some. Then in a dream, he saw this man of God. Then he was about to say the same thing he said in physical in a dream. Then he saw a very tall angel who drew a sword. He said he was, he was shaking in the dream. So this sort of the people will not even talk. And to get to this place, it's not anointing. It's ordination. It's by divine ordination. There are people, and, 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 and by reason of your faithfulness and your long service. It's not for people who have just been around and on, on, on all that, are, are just gifted. No. These ones, they deal with nations. They deal with nations. The anointing that corresponds to this level of call is Isaiah 10 verse 27. The yoke is destroyed by reason of the ointment. The anointing. That anointing that attends to this call is the anointing for judgment. They speak a nation. This one I was talking about a nation. They speak a nation's, nation's quick. That is that level. They usually have national influence or global influence. There are people, there are people who have become sisters to the extent that even their deaths, deaths, their deaths become epochs. Epoch in the kingdom. Hello? It's not everybody, not, not all men of God have mantles. This is a mantled office. Hello? Not all men of God have mantles. You have to get to this level to get a mantle. It is these people who, when they die, there's a, there's a, there's a change or there's a shift in the direction of the body. Their deaths are major seasons. They mark major seasons. When you know here when I said when Billy Graham died, something will change. And I said to people, I said, Billy Graham and Moise Rulo, the day they die, it will mark a change in the body of Christ. These people are, are not just, they are not just apostles. They are in a mantled office. And so, and it is only when they die that their mantles are distributed. You can't get a person's mantle when a person is still alive. No. You can get an impartation of a gift or a grace. Okay? You, 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 I'll talk about impartation. You can be imparted by grace. You can receive. I remember, I remember before I had this dream with um, Archbishop Dahosa, I had another dream in 2008 where I saw Bishop Adinasari and then he he came to lay hands on me. Then he said, you have to receive something from either Hosea's inheritance. Exact words. That was 2008. It happened in 2015. Okay. So you can receive something from somebody's inheritance. You can, you can receive a gift. I received a gift for the opening of deaf ears. I've told the story. I received it in a dream. It was in a dream that the man of God, uh, Bishop Adansari, prayed for me to impart that gift. Then after the dream, I started testing it. And anywhere I go and I say, let me pray for deaf ears. Pa, 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 pa. They will just be open like that. Because it was an impartation of a gift. But a mantle is different. A mantle can only come from the people who have got into this level. They, are the man they have the mantle. Like Elijah had a mantle. Elisha had a mantle. And usually, their mantle is given in bits and pieces. Yes. So you have to grow into your own. I've, re I've had dreams where I've received salt. I've received many things from these people. And I've, I, they have told me, you have to grow into it. Many, many things. I'll talk about impartation. Then I can explain to you. So, their deaths, their deaths are sanctioned by God. 
Sometimes, some of these people, you see, when a person with a mantle dies, the, pe- the time the person dies is determined by God. Do you know Aaron, God told Moses, take Aaron to Mount Pisgah. Remove the mantle, uh, the, the garments of the high priest that he may die. So when Aaron was taken to Mount Pisgah in Numbers 20, the Bible said that he removed the garment of the high priest. And then Moses placed that garment on his son, Eliezer. Then Aaron died. As long as the, the garment was there, death could never touch him. When his time was due, the garment was, was removed. I, one day, one man of God that I used to follow some time ago died. Mass Moro. He died. I used to follow him from 2001, 2005. When he died, I felt a great sense of loss. And I went for a retreat. I said, Lord, what, what is happening? Why, is this, why did this man die? Then I had a dream. He was standing right here in this house. Then he had many blankets, many, many blankets around him. Then I saw that an order was given. And the order looked like, all right, now, one, two, go. Then, as the order was given, they started removing the blankets, one after the other. One after the other. So, he stood there, just like that. He was just like that. Then I understood that there are some people, when, when their time comes, all that God will need to do is to remove their mantle. Call them home. The same happened with the Hosa. He was just called home like that. His mantle was removed. Come home. Now your time is up. Your work is finished. Because you represent an order. That order has come to an end. The day Kenatagin died in September 2003, I felt, I, I really cried. If I heard it a week after, I cried, I cried, I, I couldn't control myself because I had followed him, I had followed him. From the year 2000, I had, I had devoured his books, literally, followed him. I came to love him so much. But then, you know, he and the prince died in the same week. And I realized that it was not just an accident. It was a shift because he was the one who pioneered the word of faith movement. You know, Miles Moreau also pioneered something. In the body. When they die, it symbolizes that those era, that era has come to an end. I met, I met, I had a dream, I met Mars Moreau, then he gave me a pen drive. That's impartation. When I met him, I said, I used to follow you. I read, he said, Take this. I have many books on this. Take it. Bring them out. Pen drive. Which means I have many books to write. There was once I had a dream. There was a coffin. They were taking a coffin. I was there. Then the book jumped from the coffin. Then I caught the book. When I woke up, the Lord said, Andrew Murray. Andrew Murray. And I, 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 I had read some of his books. But I had not paid attention to his books. He said, you, you receive something from Andrew Murray because it was in a coffin, a coffin. It wasn't death, a coffin. Then the book just jumped from the coffin and I caught it. And all spring said, Andrew Murray. That was when I, I went for all his books. All, I have all. I said, let me start devouring all his books. So these people, their voices shake nations. Their voices. When, when they are, one, one is enough for a nation. The kind of people that God is going to raise in the, in the, in, in, in the next generation, I mean, to replace this, this they, are, they are fathers now who are going to be off the scene. And people are going to replace them. You will see these kind of things I'm talking about. You will see why somebody can just say a word. And the whole government will, will freeze because of that word. 
they always have to watch his TV series to see if he says something. <laughs> now, this, okay, now let me get to the last thing. Giftedness and anointing. See, the anointing is different from gift. A gift is an endowment, whether natural or spiritual, and an anointing counts on the gift to empower the gift to serve as God wants the gift to serve. An example is this. There are many appliances in the kitchen, and there are different, different uses, different functions. The kettle has a function, the toaster has a function, the fruit has a function, but these, all these functions are gifts, gifts in them, but electricity is what animates these various gifts and empowers their function. And so, applying it to what I'm saying, electricity will be the anointing. That power, that sets the gifts on fire. You can have a gift, but you need an anointing on the gift. If the gift will, number one, minister to God, Number two, be a blessing to the church. Not everything can be a blessing to the church. Anything that does not issue from Christ can never add to the church. You can have a very nice voice to sing, but if that voice is not anointed, it can't minister to God, it can't add anything to the church. David's playing on the harp was a talent. It was a gift. He had to sharpen the gift. But for the harp, for the plane of the harp to drive away demons from Saul, the Spirit of God had to come on David. But the anointing didn't teach David how to play the harp. No. He had to learn how to play the harp and to sharpen his skills. But the anointing came on him. And that anointing empowered his gifting. Natural giftings can also be empowered by God. Because natural giftings are also God-given. God can use your natural gift. And chances are that if God wants somebody to serve in a particular capacity, God will more likely choose one who is already predisposed and put his anointing, anointing on that gift. That is, why, that is why Moses Moses was sent to Egypt to do what? To learn how to write, read and write. Because at that time, Egypt was the country that knew how to write. Why? Because God knew that he was going to be writing the five books of Moses and writing many things. And so he allowed him to go to school to, to, to enlarge his capacity. When the anointing came, he could write. Peter, with all his anointing, wrote only two books. Paul, with his anointing, wrote 14 books. The difference was their capacity of their mind. That's why you don't discard you don't discard things like education and say, oh, it's anointing. No, 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 no. You are making a mistake. You are making a mistake. It's also important. You don't say, I, I will just sit behind the keyboard and anointing will come up here and I will play. No, it already happens. You must learn it. You must go to Ken or to uh, 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 Stephen. Let them teach you. You will learn the rudiment. How to how to play the keyboard, and you must practice and practice so your gifting becomes skills. When the anointing comes, the anointing can rest on your skills. And then when you play, it will not just be skills, it will be the anointing taking your skill. But you can be anointed and you can sit behind the keyboard, and all of us will be sleeping because even though you are anointed, you are producing discord. What you are playing is out of tune. You can be, un I'm telling you, you see, in the Bible, listen, uh, David was trained in how to use a sling. Let me tell you something. It wasn't the anointing that sent the stone to Goliath's forehead. It was David's training in the wilderness. And I can prove that to you in Judges 20 verse 16. Bible said there were people who could sling, who could sling a hair strand and not miss. They have been so trained that if you take one hair strand like this and then you ask them to aim, they can aim and hit it. Hello? 
So David had been training himself in the wilderness. The anointing is, you see, a, a whole Goliath cannot be brought down by just a stone. That is anointing. But the stone locating his forehead, it was because David had trained the wilderness to, to aim even at a, at, at a hair's breadth. So, there has to be a balance. Your giftings are important, but your giftings must be anointed. And your giftings are not the anointing. A nice voice is not anointing. How you stretch the song is not anointing. That one is a gift. You learn that one, you practice that one, you have a nice voice, but you have, you have to be anointed before your voice can heal the sick. Before your singing can be, bring deliverance to people who are, who are depressed. Before your singing can touch people uh, with conviction. You can, you, you can, you can, you, you, the anointing can come on the things you do and perfect them for them to attain a godly end. That is how the anointing works with our gifts. What you have been endowed with already, the anointing can come upon it. And the anointing can perfect it to attain God's end with it. So there are four categories of giftings. The first one is natural gifts. Natural gift is what I've talked about. Natural gift. In fact, when God wanted somebody to design all the intricate designs of the tabernacle, you know what he did? He chose somebody who already had that skill. When they wanted somebody to compound the anointing, the, the, the incense, they, they said, you must do it according to the art of the apothecary or the perfumer. Get somebody who has been trained, a chemist, and let him combine the thing, and I will put anointing on the person. So, God even chose Bezalel and Aholiab, who were artisans already. And God said, I've put the spirit of wisdom in them already. They are artisans. Now, choose them, let the anointing come upon them, and they can design all manner of works in the tabernacle. God didn't choose Aaron or a lay person and say, come, because of the anointing, now you can design. No, no, no. The person had to have acquired the skill first. So don't, 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 don't downplay natural gifting. Mental development, they can aid the expression of anointing. Yes. Then, we have grace gifts. So natural gifts, and then grace gifts. Grace gifts, we usually call them spiritual gifts. Grace gifts are gifts that are unveiled when you become born again. They are, they are called spiritual gifts. They are indications of your spiritual DNA, your, your, the stream you are connected to, and your spiritual inheritance. And they are grace gifts. And those grace gifts they were given to you before you were even born again. Second Timothy 1 9, he said that he gave us grace even before the world began. He gave us grace in Christ before the world began. Who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. That's why I say, Jeremiah, before you were a clot of blood in your mother's womb, I had ordained you as a prophet. That was a grace gift. There are some people, even before they become born again, you see them as if it is some kind of gifts. It's, it's in their inheritance. I've told you before that any family that they are witches, they were meant to be prophets. They were meant to be prophets. But Satan corrupted that inheritance. Every family that you see witches, yeah, their inheritance that God gave them was the prophetic. But their ancestors didn't know and they consulted idols and they were shortchanged. Any family with fetish priests, they were supposed to be apostles. That was their inheritance. But they, but they were shortchanged and it was corrupted. So sometimes you will see certain graces that you see in your life that you will see that it was an inheritance. 
So the grace, the, the grace gifts or spiritual gifts, they are also, the, the anointing must come upon them. When you become born again, you see these gifts, you see them manifesting. Even before you, you were baptized in the Holy Ghost, some people used to have dreams. Have you not heard many people who say that in my dreams here, if I dream, it happens, and they are not even believers? Yes. It's a gift. It's a grace gift given to you before you were even born again. But they manifest when you're born again. Now the anointing must come upon these gifts. Must come upon them. Okay? Then we have imparted gifts. Imparted gifts. Romans 1.11, Paul said that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts. Imparted gifts. These are gifts that are imparted through laying of hands or through the word of prophecy. Gifts can be imparted. Yes. Gifts can be imparted. And, and you know, uh, in 1 Timothy 4.14, Paul said, the gift that was imparted to you through laying of hands. Okay? Through laying of hands. In 1 Timothy 4.14, said, so the gift that was imparted to you, do not neglect the gift that was, that was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. They laid hands on him, then that gift came. And Paul said, any imparted gift is a seed. Any impartation you receive is a seed. Now, you must develop that seed. Okay? Now, you can, you can get impartation from hands being laid on you, from listening to an anointed vessel, from an anointed hand laid on you. In fact, in fact, even impartation can come through touching. Oh, yes. Jesus' garment release power. Paul's aprons release power. Interstice can come through that, but it's only a seed. A seed. You, you have to grow it. So you can have impartation and never see it manifested in your life because you are not growing it. It's a seed. It must grow. A seed goes through incubation before manifestation. So you can have a dream. That, you see, that's why sometimes there was a time that I, I sat down and I said, no, 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 no. This impartation that I, I had in the dream, I'm not seeing it. What is the problem? And I had to go to God. Say, this thing you gave to me, I'm not seeing it. Because you must be involved in developing the incubation onto manifestation. You can have imparted gifts. Then the last category of gifting, coveted gifts. Coveted gifts. Uh, they are gifts that are acquired through strong desire. Strong desire. First Corinthians 12, 32. It said, covet earnestly. Covet. The only place the Bible says we should covet is when it comes to spiritual gifts. You can covet a gift. Covetousness. Covet. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31. 12, 31. But earnestly desire the best gift. Now, the word desire uh, in, in, in the New King James, in the King James is covet. And that word in the Greek is the word zelu. Zelu. And zelu is not just desire. Zelu is covet, covetousness. When you say you are coveting something, it is something that does not belong to you. Eh? Say, so do not covet your neighbor's goods. It means it doesn't belong to you. So you can earnestly, go to the King James, you can covet something, you can covet a grace, and they have it. It's allowed. The only time covetousness is allowed is when it comes to spiritual things. So when you see a grace and you like it, the fact that you like it means that, it could mean that it is God who has put that desire in your heart. If anyone desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good thing. You can desire something. And God can put that desire in your heart. It's not everybody who desires the healing anointing. Have you thought about that? It's not everybody who desires the teaching anointing. Hello? There was a point in my life I didn't pay attention to healing, anointing, power. No, no, no. I desired the teaching, anointing. That was what I. That was what I was in. 
at that point, at that time, if you gave me Benny Hinn's tape, chances are that I will never watch it. Yes. But if you gave me Mars Moreau, you gave me the teachers, can I take it? I, was, I, I could sit, I could be watching them for hours and not get bored. But the power ministers, take it, take it. Oh, there was no desire. <laughs> that, you see, that, that tells me that when somebody says, I want this thing, chances are that it is God who put that desire in your heart because not everybody desires it. When, when Benihi laid hands on me, I was surprised because I never listened to him. I had never listened to him, never, never watched him, never sat down to watch him before. I didn't like that, that aspect of ministry. I didn't like it. It was after that lay of hands that my mind came to it. I said, oh, okay. And I started watching. Then I started enjoying watching him. So the desire is put in your heart by God. You can covet. Because it's not for money. It's not for fame. It's not for you. It's for the service. You can convert that this grace I converted. Whatever you can pray, you can pray for it. Pray, pray to God. Spend time praying. Oh God, let this. Sometimes you can even convert an aspect of the anointing. Because, for instance, there are people who minister healing through laying of hands. Just laying of hands. If he doesn't lay hands, you will not be healed. People like Ura Roberts. But look at his son. He ministers with his mouth. Word of knowledge. That's that's a different stream. And people who minister healing by choir, a choir, a choir, singing, create an atmosphere. That's a different stream. There are others who minister by preaching, like Bonky. After preaching, then there are others who take the microphone and like Idahosa, blind. Open, lame, start walking. That, so you can say that, okay, I have this, I have that, but I think this one makes the work easier. I want this. <laughs> but then you'll be shown the price you must pay. There's always a price to pay in time, time that you spend with God, and to pay in research. Because you have to set through the scripture to locate the scripture that guarantees that manifestation in the person's life. Before the thing comes upon you. It's not, it's not just a matter of hands being. He can lay hands on you. Lay hands on you. There was, there was a time where I, I was talking to somebody. And the person said. I was, the, the person was a prophet. And I, he said. Uh, you know. Sometimes when I'm ministering. I can get dreams people have dreamt. I said. Oh really? I said. How does it work? He said. I don't know. It just comes. I said, oh, I pray for it. And I, I got it. Sometimes I can, God can give me, you had a dream, this, this, that. I can give details of the dream. And then the people will come. It was, it was, it was, I prayed on my knees. Like, like the, the, the anointing to open death, yes. I prayed. That one, I prayed. I took Mr. Adonisari's uh, videos. Watched them. Hours, hours. Praying in tongues, hours. One day, at the office, I knelt down. I said, oh God, this thing, I want this. I didn't know that many students had one ear blocked. Many. Hundreds. I didn't know. And I was called to minister to students. Like that. So, that it was in line with my ministry. That same night, he came, lay hands on my hand. There was oil in my hand. Then he said, go and pray for your family. Number one. Number two, go and pray for people. The following Sunday, I went to a school. Called for deaf ears. They came. Pa, it opened. I said, wow. The, Afternoon, call for deaf ears. And I've prayed for hundreds of people all over schools. Deaf ears. Open. It was an impartation of a gift. It got to a point, it was, I was so used to it that I didn't take notice of it. It was so normal to me. Then one day I was watching TV. Then someone was praying for people. Then one person's one ear, a deaf ear open. Just pet one, one person. And the way they made noise and they dwelt on that testimony and hyped it. I said, wow. Sometimes you can take for granted certain things. Look at the way this person is really happy about the gift. And when, when, when you get things through that, that means you convert things and you don't cherish them, you can lose them. Because it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not your natural, 
it, it wasn't in your stream. You borrowed it. So you must always cherish it and use it. Otherwise, you will lose it. So the anointing is on these gifts. Okay. Now, let me give you this quickly. Then we'll close. What is in the anointing? What does it give you? Number one, the anointing imparts wisdom. The wisdom you need to carry out that calling according to divine plan is imparted with anointing. The wisdom. That's the first thing that God gives you when you're anointed. The wisdom. The wisdom. You see, and the spirit of wisdom is the one who will guide you because the journey to where you are going involves series of steps and series of instructions. Number two, the anointing imparts boldness. The anointing. It imparts boldness. You become bold. You become bold when you are anointed. That's why it has mere. See, mere is a substance that deadens feelings. Mere. That is why Jesus Christ on the cross, they gave him mere. Mere. They gave him mere mixed with, uh, with uh, 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 vinegar and wine. So that it's his feelings. So that he cannot feel the pain. And he rejected it because he wanted to feel the pain. So the mare stands for boldness. That will make you numb. Numb to pain. And to things that people fear. That's why when you're anointed, when, when anointing comes upon you, you are, you, you are bold. Peter was anointed and he was able to speak. The same Peter who was timid. Who was ran away from one little girl. When anointing came, he stood openly and he was speaking. That was boldness. The anointing imparts boldness. Boldness. It also attracts persecution. Listen, the anointing, as you progress in the anointing, one thing that one thing that it will attract is persecution. Do you know why? Because of the mayor. The mayor is for suffering. The mayor is for suffering. And, and because of that, the anointing will attract persecution. Every anointed person, as you are, as you climb the ladder, you will get to a point where you are going to attract persecution. Usually, before you, you move from one level to the other, you will come under great persecution. Persecution can come as a, as a result of your own mistakes or as a result of your own carelessness or as a result of no mistake. Just being you and doing the things you are supposed to do, it will attract persecution. Okay. So if you are afraid of that, don't desire to be anointed. Huh. When you start hitting, now the anointing prepares you to walk in the fullness of the calling by attracting all you need. The anointing determines the impartation you get, the encounters you get. If there's a human anointing that is laid upon you, you will see that God will, the anointing will lead you to the right book, lead you to the right meetings, the right person, the right messages for, to increase the, the anointing. It's the anointing that will guide you. The anointing. Because it prepares you to walk in the full measure of your calling. Now, the anointing attracts both good and bad things. Every new level comes with new demons to fight. I said David, when he was anointed, had to deal with Goliath. Second anointing, deal with House of Saul. Third anointing, deal with the Philistines. Every level of the anointing comes. The anointing is visible and can attract attacks. When occultic people look into the spirit, they can see you are anointed. They can see. They can see. And they can, they, can, they can initiate attacks. I've had many encounters with people who are occult people who came to me in dreams. Many, many of them. Many of them. The popular ones you know, the ones we all know, some of them came to me in dreams. <laughs> there was one time I had an encounter with one of them. And I stood at the junction of his church and I removed his signboard. And he came. And it was, it was, it was a first first encounter. Warn me. You warned me. Because he has seen me in the spirit. And you know, the, the contention was this. The fire. He said, he is the one who has the fire in this city. 
But our logo is the fire. That's what he saw in the spirit. <laughs> this thing I'm wearing is not fashion, no. it's revelation. <laughs> it's revelation, it's not fashion, no. You see, I remember one day I was ministering and I saw somebody with this, this same thing in the spirit. I thought it was real. And I said, I see this thing on your, on your chest. I laid hands on him and that died. Then he fell. That was, and that was a witness. So it's, 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 an, it's, it's a revelation. It's not just fashion. I don't, I, I don't just follow fashion. No. Okay. Then, so it attracts good things and can also attract bad things. You see, that's why if you don't engage the anointing within, the anointing within protects you from corruption. Listen, the anointing within protects you from corruption. But you must protect the anointing upon you from corruption. There was a point where somebody came to me in a dream. And the person said, I want to show you something. I want to show you how you can do this. And that person is a false prophet. How you can do A, B, C. See, many people get corrupted in dreams. They don't, you don't know. Hello? There are many people who say, me, I've not been to a shrine before. If I've been to a shrine, may God strike me. And yet, they are operating with familiar spirit. It, it, it's not just by going to a shrine. It's when you, 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 you don't engage the anointing within to protect you from being corrupted. Jesus, Jesus was approached in a dream to be corrupted. The devil came and said, if you are son of God, fall down and worship me and I'll give you riches. Do you think it was, it was, it was a physical thing? It was a dream, a vision encounter. If he had fallen down in the dream, eh, he would have been corrupted before he started his ministry. And so that the, 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 the anointing will attract people who will come to, to negotiate with you, to compromise. People who will come to fight with you and all that to give up. It will attract all these things. But if you engage the anointing within, it will protect you from corruption. There are many people who lose the anointing or corrupt it be, be through money. It, it, it didn't happen just the time the money was given to you. No, the corruption took place in the spirit. It's a spiritual thing. When I had those dreams, I said, oh, okay, so that is what... And you know something? The very week that I encountered one of them, that same week, he, he went to one of my pastors in a dream to go and inject him, try to inject him. The one who came to me and I said, look, I, I sacked him. He went to one of my pastors to try to inject him. They will try to corrupt you. That's why you need, see, that's why your, the, your, your only safeguard is the word and the anointing within. That is what will protect you from corruption. Otherwise, if you're only going by the anointing upon you, you'll be corrupted. It will be a matter of time. You'll be corrupted. There are people who can give you money and that money is supposed to buy your, your anointing. You don't know. Money is a minimum of exchange. You can use money to exchange things. Money is a medium of exchange. You can take Neymar's money and get his leprosy. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I, okay, let me, let me continue. Okay. It, it imparts zeal. Zeal. The anointing imparts zeal. Without anointing, we'll be, we'll be holy but not zealous. The anointing within imparts a love and a passion for the Lord. But anointing upon imparts a zeal for the Lord's work. That is the sweet smelling cinnamon. The cinnamon gives joy. The cinnamon in the substance of the anointing gives joy, zeal. That's why the anointing upon is, is so nice. It's so beautiful. It, it, it gives you zeal to the extent that if you don't take care, you can follow ministry, 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 and be dry. Because that anointing would, upon you, it, it gives you zeal. There's a measure of joy and fulfillment you get by ministering the anointing. Oh, you don't understand. There's a, when, when, I, when I hear people, when somebody comes on the phone, and the person was talking about certain things he was going through, as he was talking about it, I was filled with anger. But I was also filled with joy because I knew I could help her. As he was talking, 
I knew I could help her by the anointing. And so I was filled with anger, but I was filled with joy. You don't understand the joy you get when you lay hands on people and they get healed. Or the joy you get when you teach. That's, a, that's why I can teach for six hours. Eight hours non-stop. If you like dare me today, de- today, just just <laughs> just dare me. <laughs> I want you to dare me. Oh, I can I can teach from morning to evening. I will not think about food, think about sitting down. I can because of the anointing to teach. But if I follow that, eh, if I follow that, I will be teaching and teaching and not having time to study and build myself and I will run out of gas. Because the anointing within is what keeps you going. There are many people who go about preaching, preaching here and there, jumping from place to place, laying hands, before you realize he has fallen into one thing or the other. Why? The anointing within is not engaged. There's, there's nothing that sustains you. Nothing that draws you back to the secret place. Before you realize you are corrupted by money, before you realize you are corrupted by the desire for money, because the anointing brings, brings wealth. <laughs> yes, it, it, it brings wealth. People sometimes say, eh, you know, eh, men of God, men of God, eh, they, are, they are rich. Listen, the anointing attracts increase. And, 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 and that is the sweet smelling calamus. That stands for increase. It brings increase. Sweet smelling calamus in the anointing. The anointing upon. It brings increase. There is treasure in the oil. Proverbs 21 verse 20. There is treasure in the house of the wise. Treasure and oil. 21 verse 20. The widow, the widow Elisha met, had oil in her house. And that oil was a solution to all her problems she didn't know. Because she said, what I have is just this oil. And the oil said, okay, if that's what you want, I'm just an ordinary oil. But Elisha said, go and borrow vessels and start pouring the oil into multiply. That was what brought increase. There are many people if you don't engage what God has given you, you go hungry. Oh yes, I'm telling you the truth. I'm not saying you put a charge for your, for your ministration. No. What I'm saying is that it is the anointing that attracts. God can speak. That. Why is it that God can speak to me and tell me, take this whole amount and go and give it to this man of God. What? He has not done anything for me in the physical he has no need. Okay, I don't know. But he is okay. Has not done anything for me in the physical. There are people that I can help. They say, no, take this money, go and give it to him. Why? His anointing is calling. Hmm. Men of God are going to continue to be rich and rich. People will not understand. So, because, you see, now, this is one area where many people also sleep. There are people, when the anointing starts bringing increase, they are caught in a web. They are caught in selfishness and covetousness. Do you know why? The anointing within has been neglected. The anointing within will always check you. It will always check you. Always check you. Always raise signals. Always you hear the sound, beeping sound. Always. It's not every money that you collect. Somebody came to me and said, I want to give this money. I want to give this money. And the money was about $1,000. $1,000. dollars is, is, is money. Then I said, if I take this money from your hand, laugh at me. Knowing what you do, I will never take this money. 
that I gave instructions to certain people. This person, if he comes with any money, don't take it. It's not, it's not just a matter of, oh, I'm going to say a seed. There are, there are certain, certain seeds that you take. God will say, don't use one seed of it. Go and give it all. Sometimes it's for your protection, you don't even know. There are certain seeds that you take. God will say, don't even use one seed. Give all. And people miss it because when, when those, those, people, those of us who God is calling into ministry, put it in your mind. Okay, the last one is that the anointing brings power to rule, dominion. Dominion. This is the cassia. Cassia in the oil. Cassia has beautiful purple flowers. And purple speaks of royalty, kingdom, dominion, etc. So there's, there's dominion, there's power to rule in that anointing. Power to rule in the anointing. When, when the anointing comes upon you, you become invincible. You become, you become invincible. You cannot be defeated. Because the power to rule is on you. Sometimes... There, there, there are certain things that you hear. When you hear them, you will see that this, this, this thing, the matter is unto me. Because you, 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 you know that the anointing has power to deal with it. You, you will not be afraid of, of, of things. There are people, Christians, who are afraid of many things. When the oil touches your head, you will not be afraid. You will not be afraid of things. One day, Somebody called me. In fact, he he called me in their family. Then there was the person in the ministry. There was something that a malam had given them. He said he had taken gold gold from their family house, and he had put the thing in a polythene, wrapped the thing. And the person said, the malam told. Him, not to open it. Otherwise, they will go blind. And they had kept the thing for months getting to here. But now they are fed up. They want to open the thing. <laughs> so that he told me. I said, what kind of nonsense is that? What is, what is, who is the malam? I told him, I said, what, I said, what kind of nonsense is that? I said, let's go. And I'm going to open the thing for you. I'll just open the thing. If it's good, I'll just take it and give it to you. Because this nonsense. I went there. Then I started removing the thing. And I was watching the the father, the father was like, <laughs> maybe he thought he was going to explode. I just opened the thing, opened the thing, opened the thing. When I opened the thing, <laughs> it was rock, rock. <laughs> but, but you know, I didn't have one fear that he, Malam, I don't respect those people because I, I know what is, what is on me. I know that they are, they are below me. But you see, if you don't have, if you don't know, you you will start panicking. See, and Malam said those things they don't you don't take them you don't pass by my doorstep with those things. If I get up and I see blood and eggs and all that, I'll just kick it like this. I say nonsense. I just go because I know it cannot. I get to me. Yes, the anointing, the anointing gives that dominion. So you must desire to be anointed. Desire to be anointed. The anointing you have is not enough. The anointing that comes upon you for you to serve. No, you must stay in God's presence. Desire, desire for it. When you have a desire, you know what you do? You spend the time, pay the price. The price you pay, you pay the price on your knees. Pay the price in the closet. The, the price we pay, the price we pay for the anointing is time we spend in prayer. Time we spend with God. The time you spend with God alone the inconvenience we'll go through to be spending time with God. The time you'll sit up researching to the scriptures. You can, you, you, for one, one impartation, God can ask you to read from Genesis and start finding, finding, looking for it. Oh yes. Look, look, look for it in the Bible. When you locate it, that impartation becomes real in your life. And it takes time. It takes consistency. Many people want the effect of the anointing, but they don't want, they want to pay the price. You can be so anointed that 
what you, you the things you do if even you are you are you are leading bible study eh, or you are sweeping the floor something is happening when you are cooking something is on you when you are ushering something is on you when you are playing the instrument something is on you you don't know sometimes sometimes when i'm ministering for instance there, there are things sometimes i can see when the anointing is on this instrumentalist or that instrumentalist for what i'm doing at the moment but i would just say that the anointing is on this person for this ministration this person should play it's not it's just not by each other oh you play you know no that is anointing that you tell me sometimes when glory choir is ministering and i minister with them sometimes you will see the synergy you will see that's when i say the anointing is upon them i will see the synergy between us because it's for the program so the anointing upon me and the anointing upon them synergizing to create the, the, the atmosphere and the effect the same thing you what you did to, what you what you did to the service might be something that was done with oil if you swept this place and you are anointed you are saturated with oil eh, and you are sweeping the place i'm telling you there's something you are doing that's why even sharing food they said bring men who are full of the spirit to share food bring men who are full of the spirit to come and share food Stephen and 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 philip to share food sharing food to anointing they didn't say bring business administration students <laughs> let's be on our feet we have to respect the anointing i said that anything without oil is not accepted without oil it's not accepted without oil it's not accepted sometimes you will see that the anointing the anointing there can be an ebb and flow of the anointing the anointing upon that it can wait it can go down you will see that there's an ebb there's a flow and when it gets to that point you 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 know that you know that you have to you have to go back spend more time with the lord I don't know what your desire is, but I'm telling you, you need an anointing even for your family. An anointing for people who come to you in your business. An anointing for, for your roommate. You see, you, the anointing upon you is not for you. It's for people, to help people. When If God calls you as a priest, as a priest to your family, there's an anointing that must come upon you to be able to intercede. If God has called you as an intercessor for this ministry, there's an anointing that must come upon you for you to intercede for the ministry. And so the question is, are you anointed? If you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, that's the first thing you must do. If you have not been baptized in the Spirit, that's the first thing that you must do. From today, desire to be baptized in the Spirit. Pray, desire. Go for meetings. When you come, when we come for meetings, come and let, let let us lay hands on you to be filled with the Spirit, for you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, to speak in tongues. That is the first step into the anointing. You have the anointing within you, but anointing upon you, the anointing upon you starts when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You shall receive power when the Spirit comes upon you. That is where you can be a witness. <laughs> Liko lobo ho se tele baka. Le bahata na makali baros. Le bro no ko bahata na maha. Eke prete te proto shi prahata le mahata luko sedes. Rogo kalimbo ko te bro do te ne bredes. Re bo kale bro la kalimbo na matani makalo bo sale maha. Rabwa ko bro do do zi brede de brata tata. Eka katati patali proto to shelaha. Roka bara katara balabaha. Mande brede ke de brodo do sile hadalaha. Eke prete ko shelehedes. Eka tayali mahata kalamahaurus. Roto to. Iarama lo salabaha. Le kroto lo bolo tarabaha. Mande dre bene son de brodo Reke bata de brodo do do de ze de brut. Le kroto sekre bere bahare. I paria tani me kandi brodo silia. Rakata malimbro do no si trepeta. Rakaria tara makadi brodo. 
Rekembo Shede Hahe, Rekemba De Brodo Sili Handa, Ayala Mahatsili, Yeke Brolo Tony Haliaha, Ratala Kalde Brolo Koselehem, Mieli Halia Kata, Reke Brolo Silahandaha, Valia Nan De Brolo Hosa, Ibran De Brolo Kosibaha, Stir up, stir up the spirit, stir up your spirit. Pray in tongues, stir up your spirit, pray in tongues, and receive a touch of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Bahatara Bakariana, Ira Bahatara Mahaliana, Likro no Hundiana Maha, Ekro Turu Bahara Baba. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lift, lift, lift up your hands. I want to pray a prayer for you. The Lord is saying that there are some people that um, what, what he's going to do is that you're going to have an encounter with, with his anointing. I don't know what um, is going to accomplish in you. I don't know whether it's healing, whether it's deliverance, impartation, whether you are going to be stirred up in what you carry. But I sense that there's a flow, there's a flow, there's a flow. And, and the Lord wants to release something on people right in this room. Now, it's going to come in various ways. Just be sensitive, various ways. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to know that you have encountered something different. You have encountered the anointing. It's going to rest on you. But some people, the anointing is going to come. You're going to see something traveling from your feet upwards. You're going to feel heat, electricity. You're going to feel, I mean, God wants you to have an encounter, a touch. It's just a touch of the spirit. It's a seed. It's a seed. Father, in the name of Jesus, let it be a touch. Let it be a touch on your people. Let oil, oh, I see oil being sprinkled on people. This is a touch. Let oil be sprinkled, sprinkled sprinkled on them let the oil of the anointing be sprinkled now receive it there are people you are going to you are going to you are going to feel it in your body your body you are going to feel it some of you are going to feel heat intense heat some of you are going to feel a tingling in your in your hand in your hand in your hand that there are people who feel a tingling in your left hand for instance your left hand uh, when you feel it in your left hand, just come. I want to pray for you. Your left hand, your left hand, your left hand. Kebraha tara makos shendehe. Le kolobo si telebeha mande braha dos. Ho kebraha tala makon de braha laba sala. Re ke pekte tel mande rebo shene mahari ande babam. Iboromo si ne baha. Rebe ke brodo si kolohan si braha ande brogodose. Oh, me hati mahata i mahasalaba. Rebecca Sudi Helemaha, Brenda Makozi de Harava. What you are feeling in your left hand is an impartation. It's an impartation. It's an impartation. That's, and and if, if you stay, if you stay, if you stay long enough in prayer, you give yourself to fasting and the word, you are going to you are going to break out into a strong deliverance anointing. Strong deliverance anointing. You're going to see yourself ministering deliverance to people, bringing deliverance. One of you who have an impartation to minister to barren women, barren women and, and, and people who cannot give birth. That is, it is, that is a seed. It's not anointing, but it's a seed. It's a seed that God has dropped. That, that's what you are feeling in your left hand. In your left hand. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray. I pray. Let's let that ocean come stronger and stronger and stronger. Let it come stronger on them in the name of Jesus. From today, from today, let that anointing begin to engage them. Let it begin to engage them in the name of Jesus. Father, 
Loki Brete Matani Makao Shalaha Reke Namaha Sidi Baraba Hori Alaba Mandi Bidem Ika Para Mahasada Li Krubaha Thank you Lord Thank you Lord Thank you Lord I just want to pray for you in the name of Jesus Father let it be done in Jesus name I pray for you in the name of Jesus let it be done let it be done let it be a touch let it be an increase an increase an increase in the name of Jesus now I want to pray for another group of people you are going to feel heat on your right side just your right side your right side just from your shoulder down as soon as you feel it just come I'll pray for you and I'll show you what it stands for as soon as you feel there are not many I see but but they are here you are going to feel it on your right side it's heat on your right side right side right side right side right side right side I will not be silent I will always worship you as long as I am Who felt heat on your right side? It is angelic ministration. The Lord is the Lord is telling you that He has given you an escort, angelic escort, angelic escort to accompany your ministration, accompany whatever you do. That's what you feel. Listen. There will be times, there will be times that you will be provoked. You will be provoked. You will be angry. You will feel that same heat. There will be times that you will be angry, provoked. You will feel that same heat on your right side. When it happens like that, make sure you don't say negative words. I, I don't know whether you understand. Listen, let me explain. That, that, that heat you are feeling now, what is happening is that it's an angelic ministration. Now, there will be times that you will be provoked. You will feel that heat strongly. If you release judgment, it will stand. That's why, that's why I just want to caution you first so that you know, you know how to steward the anointing. Because you can release judgment. You can lift up your hands and declare. And you will see the thing happen to to, to people and you feel the thing and it's supposed to be I, I, I affect people who are opposing God in your life opposition and people who are opposing God people who are who are enemies of God they are the ones who are supposed to be judged but if you don't take care even when you are provoked you feel that heat you will speak it will happen and I want to pray for you that God will soak your hearts in love and God will mature you in love and this is a seed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, 
I, I have, I see them. You are going to minister with wisdom. 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 You are going to, you are going to minister with wisdom. People will come to you for counseling and they will go not knowing what you told them, but they will, they will not, they will not get over, they will not, they will not get, get over what you told them. It's an impartation of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom will visit you. Thank you, Lord. 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 In the name of Jesus, I impart. I impart. I impart. I impart. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I impart. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Libra hatara mako shaleba. Ika tala makani yando shaleba ha. Rebeke tabaha. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lowly ha taraba. When you begin to engage this anointing, you have a visitation from the spirit of wisdom. He will visit you. He will visit you. And that same anointing, that same angelic ministration will start manifesting in your life. There's somebody in the middle there. God has given you a seer. Now, from Kabila to Alfred, lift up your hands. All those here. There's a seer anointing coming on somebody. Seer. Now, your, your eyes, your God is touching. I don't know. I don't know who the person is. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to be, be drifting. Lift up your hand. There's a seer anointing. One of you here, this area. God is touching your eyes right now. You're going to be seeing dreams, visions, anointing for seeing visions, dreams. Receive it in the middle of there. Just, just, just. Oh, thank you, Lord. If you are sick, any part of your body, lift up your hand. Put one, one hand there. Let me pray for you. And then we'll be, we'll close because of time. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every spirit of infirmity in this auditorium. I step into my office in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you. I command you, go right now. I command your hold to be broken. Any, any defect, any sickness caused by a spirit. Right now, in Jesus' name, I command your hold to be broken. Let them go in the name of Jesus. And I release healing. I release God's healing power through the sound waves into your body. In the name of Jesus, from your head to your toe, be made every with hope. In Jesus' name, be healed. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody pressure on your forehead. Let me pray for you. I don't know what that means, but there's pressure on your forehead. Pressure. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think it's pain, but it's some kind of heaviness. Heaviness on your forehead. Anybody? I want to pray for you. There's heaviness on your forehead. It's pressure. All right. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Heal in the name of Jesus. Heal in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just begin to thank God. Just thank, thank Him. Hallelujah. He has won the victory. Hallelujah. He has
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You draw from the deep. You draw from the deep. You draw from the deep. The deep. The deep. The deep will call out to the deep. And you draw from the deep. You draw from the deep. You draw from the flinty rock. Rivers of oil. Ebrehe 
Maria Teri Moko Siri Bahara 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 What a powerful name. Within the last one month, within the last one month, you have had dreams where you see plenty of money, plenty. I mean, not just scattered, plenty of money. I, I, I want to come, I want to pray, pray for you. Within the last one month, you have had dreams where you see plenty of money. Uh, there's one more person, plenty of money. There's one more person. I saw three people. In the, within the last one month, I'm going to use them as a point of contact. Somebody, somebody has forgotten the dream that he or she had that you, you saw money. Because there were three. I saw three people with that dream, but I'm only two are here. So just cast your mind. It's the last one month. Dream that you had had plenty money. Either you came into plenty money or you just saw. Just come and I want to pray for you. Yes, there are three. I want to pray for you. What is going to happen is this. Listen, in the next three months ahead of us, uh, I don't know. See, there's something heavy, very heavy upon us. It's wealth, very heavy, very, very heavy, very heavy upon us. What I saw was like something trying to break into the auditorium. Break, break. Very heavy. It was like the, the ceiling was about giving away. Giving way. And the Lord said, there are three people within the last one month, they've had dreams where they were, I mean, they encountered money, real money. The Lord said there's something heavy that is about being released upon, diminishing upon the members of the Spirit Spirit within the next three months. Now, lift up your hand. Listen, don't joke what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not. Within, within these three months, every day you pray, every day you pray, tell the Lord, Father, I am ready. I am a candidate of your end time harvest. I'm ready to finance the harvest if you give me money. With, with, within these three months, anytime you pray, don't forget to tell God, Father, I am a candidate of the end time uh, harvest, the financiers of the end time harvest, of the harvest, I will finance it. So tell the Lord that if you prosper me, oh God, you can count on me that I will finance the, 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 the harvest. Within the next three months, every day you pray, just pray and tell God, just tell God. Some people are, are going to come into unexplainable things, unexplainable breakthroughs and open doors and release of favor. Unexplainable. You mark it. Unexplainable. Open doors and release of favor. And that is what is going to release that wealth. It's going to come in stages, in levels. But you will see, you will see that in the space of these three months, you will see you see, today, today is the, the last but one day of February. You see March, April, May. Mark it. I saw it. I just saw it. It said three people had dreams in the last one month. And that is what he's doing right now, right now in this ministry. And even those who are listening online, you are going to be affected. Every, every day of these three months, the next three months from March to April, every day you pray. Tell God, I am a candidate of your end time harvest. If you prosper me, oh God, I'll, I mean it from your heart. It's not mean it. That, and and, and God, God will know your heart that if God prospers you, you are going to really support the gospel, support the kingdom. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I use this as points of contact. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Maki a kisu ka hesili hala suliat. Lingro nasti verhenikos ker hanibro honda haska. Randi krobodos chile handa ler bahi krede haskida ha. Honde braha timbro hoski maha. Rebehe kadainda shonia minka indo salin ha. Fagian koli miha kaia skutes. Reke nembo kani baha da masini a dolce. Falenda baguli a teni maha kadehese. Rakande brodo site for I come upon you as dew, even as rain. I'm going to rain and give you the latter rain, the former rain in one month. I'm going to open windows of heaven, open doors of favor, and you are going to walk in them. I'm going to take you from level to level, and you are going to show forth my praise and show forth my kindness. For I've called you and I've anointed you for this purpose, that you may expand the frontiers of the kingdom. For my city side yet be spread abroad through prosperity. And I'm going to release that anointing on you. For this purpose, I called you. I'm released. The Lord is releasing that prosperity anointing on people. Anybody, if you are in business, lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. A, 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 a spirit of wisdom is coming upon you. That spirit of wisdom is going to open doors for your business. Open doors for your business. It's going to open, it's going to bring increase. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Rebella Katari Yalaba Sundays, Yalaba Hata Naba Yandiris, Rolid in Mahata Yala Halo Sans, Ricky Brando Boho Tarialam, Yililing and Diakan and Balando Dosalayelis, Ralaha Katayalan Leha, Rayala Sarala Hole Bahan, Relene Cole Bahata Yalhin, Yindoro Celebaha Land Yatanas. Raya koli mandeli hakaha, rali andara lola halalas, rili ni kona batalia hais, shiria kali rote te salas, miranda na handa kali boholos, riki yata yata la bahayas, rala handa yaha, mirelo sarahi. Mirelo sela ha 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 ha, rele makai ele hata ya lehes, ele le te koko le sara, ele le kari ya landi ya landalos, bele handi ra ta ta los, reke le le kori ya ta la, le la la ma handi ha ta la la, hip sara ha li ya la hasiri ya, oh we ha te re me ha kori me ha ya le hasiri. Yala la la ka ta la ma li ya la da Ra la ba la ba ta la ha la la Ya la la li ya la mas Bi ya la ha oi Bi ya la ha oi Bi ya la ha oi The Lord said The Lord is saying He said bi ya la ha oi He said I'm going to open your eyes to see The rivers I've created in the desert the pool and the springs have created in the waste places and in the wilderness. The Lord is saying, He's going to open your eyes. He said, For I will draw you, draw you to myself, and I will equip you, and you will draw water. You will draw water from the wells of salvation with joy. You will draw water from the wells of salvation. He said, The Lord who sees, the Lord who sees. There's well, there's well in your wilderness, but God is going to open your eyes to the well. Hey, preha tari yala o shene baha, bari atoni ma atoni ma ha. Rebele keten masa, rebele han no si behele halas. Reba hatari bekos. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your voice and pray and tell the Lord, I am a candidate for your end time harvest. I am a financier of the gospel. I will finance the harvest for his cities will spread abroad through prosperity. Tell the Lord that, oh God, if, 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 if today is the first time you are hearing this, ask the Lord to touch your heart. That, oh God, oh God, oh God, I'm prepared. I'm a candidate for the end time harvest to push it. If you bless me financially, your kingdom will not suffer. Your kingdom will not suffer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Isaiah 60 is going to happen. The sea, the abundance of the sea, the abundance of the sea is coming to you. Isaiah 60 says the abundance of the sea will come to you. It, that's, that's what is going to happen. Just mark it. Father, we thank you. Huh. Within two minutes, let's pray for Ghana. Let's pray for Ghana. Let's declare peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. Let's pray for Ghana. Let the tension cease. Let the, let the boiling cease. Let the contention cease. Let there be peace in this land. In the name of Jesus. Let there be a way out. A way out. A way out. Let God intervene. Let God intervene. There are too many agitations in the country. People are not satisfied. People have been cheated. People feel they have, they have not been catered well for. Whatever it is, let's pray that God will come on the scene. Let the Spirit of God brood over Ghana like he did in the beginning when he was over the waters. And the Spirit of God was moving upon the surface of the waters. And God said, and we declare peace upon our borders in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. We ask, oh God, whatever you have released into us, help us, grant us the discipline, grant us the wisdom, the boldness to be able to steward it. And we pray for ourselves over the next three months, oh God, help us to be strategic. Help us to be sensitive. Place us on the same wavelength of your spirit and help us to be open to dictates and directions and instructions of your spirit in the name of Jesus. We pray for Ghana. Let your hand be upon Ghana for good. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this message. For more of these, kindly visit our website, touchworldministries.com or download the Apostle Joseph Minter app on Google Play Store. You can also follow Touch World Ministries on Facebook and also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Touch World Ministries. Thank you. Touch World Ministries International. We reach disciples and